My brother wants me to pay for his wedding, but doesn't want me involved. Am I the jerk for what I did? Before we jump in, make sure to subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit that bell to turn on notifications. I'm a 31 year old female and I have a brother who's 29. He's getting married next year. We lost our mom in 2012 and our dad in 2016. We are each other's only living relatives. I have a good job. I earn a lot of money, around 150 pounds a year. My brother also has a good job, but doesn't earn anywhere near that somewhere around 35,000 pounds. We were raised to always look after each other and share. My partner and I are child free. Over the years, I have paid for my brother's master's degree, paid the down payment on his house. Our parents rented, so there is no family home. I will also be paying for my future sister-in-law, who's 26, and my brother to have future rounds of IVF, in vitro fertilization. My sister-in-law works part-time and earns about 15,000 a year. Her parents are not well off. So, my brother asked if I could contribute to the cost of the wedding. I said that I would pay for it as it is small with 100 guests and set up a wedding account for them into which I put 25,000 pounds, which they both have access to. My sister-in-law's entire family are involved as bridesmaids and groomsmen. My husband and I are guests. My brother and sister-in-law have been going around venues with her family and I got emailed the cost if it's selected. I told my brother I don't mind paying for the wedding, but I feel really weird that everyone else is involved in the decision and I'm just involved with paying. My brother has said that I'm not our parents. I can't replace our parents and that's why I'm not involved. Why can't I do something nice without making him feel like crap about it? I feel like a jerk for causing drama, but I also feel taken advantage of. For a little more information before you make your decision of jerk or not a jerk, this is in the UK in Northern Ireland to be exact. 35000 is a good salary. I don't have student debt to pay off because I didn't go to university. I was in the military before becoming a commercial pilot. My brother's salary will increase at his company. He needed a master's degree to progress beyond his current rung. My sister-in-law works part-time because she has a medical issue. She will never be able to work full-time because of this. Related, it is unclear if this is impacting their fertility. In Northern Ireland, you get one round of IVF on the NHS, which they did. They paid for two more at 8,000 each. My sister-in-law paid for another and stipulated they wouldn't be able to pay for a wedding if that was the case. My brother and sister-in-law have been emotionally through the ringer with fertility issues. It isn't a cynical attempt to get money. For everyone talking about adoption, there is some serious things with my sister-in-law's illness, meaning they aren't attractive candidates. I am close with my brother, but I do pay for things we do together. He has really been there for me emotionally, especially during some personal problems I experienced just before and after I left the military, and my future sister-in-law was too. They didn't plan the engagement party. My sister-in-law's family did, and they didn't invite me because my husband and I are, quote, never available. We just have jobs that have us moving around a lot. My sister-in-law and brother were horrified. No one had told them we hadn't been invited. They assumed we just didn't show up. But that was resolved and we had a lovely meal together instead. My husband is supportive of our financial assistance. We are also helping his sister with her college costs. Though why she had to go to the US when we have university educations that don't cost an arm and a leg right here is beyond me. I still don't know what to do in this whole situation, but I do think I'm maybe not setting him up for success as I hoped. And also that I do deserve some recognition even if it's just privately from him. So fast forwarding into the future, there's a big update. I spoke to the brother. I spoke to my brother and sister-in-law and my sister-in-law was saying she'd planned this with her brothers and sisters since she was a little girl. Her family knew her and what she wanted and traditionally weddings are about the bride and the bride's family and that they're heavily involved. I said that that's fine, but traditionally the bride's family also pays and that they are more than welcome to pay if tradition is so important. I said traditionally the groom's family are also involved. She said I was shaming her family for not being well off. I said that wasn't my intention. And then my brother's wedding is a big deal for my brother too and for me as his only family. And to be honest, we've had a kind of crappy time of it. So a nice occasion would be good. She said she understands that, but we don't have the same taste and she doesn't want to feel pressured into changing anything that she had planned. I said I wouldn't ask her to change anything. I'd just like to come with. So I didn't feel like an ATM. As you can tell, this conversation wasn't going anywhere. I said I'd like to give a speech at the reception in lieu of my dad to welcome her to the family. And she said, well, my dad will be welcoming Steven to our family. So that won't be necessary. I now realize my sister-in-law isn't interested in seeing me as or treating me like family. 
This is now clear. So then, my sister-in-law's mother calls me and says, Oh, hey, we were thinking about you and your husband and would like to help us send them on a honeymoon. I think it would be nice if it came from both sides. I lost it. I said, did she not think me paying for the entire wedding was not enough? She said she had no idea that I was paying for the entire wedding. She just assumed that it was my brother. Which, let's be clear here, that makes no sense. Where are they going to find 25,000 lying around when they've been saving for each round of IVF. So at this point, I am raging. I mean wine in my pajamas raging. I call my brother. I tell him the situation. Says he didn't know that they hadn't been told that I was paying. I said... Isn't that the default assumption at this point? Bank of sister is paying. He said he appreciated everything I've done for him and that my sister-in-law and my sister-in-law's family just don't realize how much I've done and continue to do. He says he'll sort it out. My brother smoothes things over and asks me how I would like to be involved. I said, in all honesty, the fact that it's taken several rows on a thread for him to realize that I wasn't being treated with respect is hurtful and it should not take this level of drama to be included in my own family member's wedding. I said that I would just attend as a guest. They can have sister-in-law's dream wedding, but I will be taking a step back in general. I said, I love him. I will always support him. I'll continue to support with the IVF, but otherwise my financial assistance is done. Education, house, wedding, it's over to them now. My brother says that's okay with him and asks if stepping back means we won't see each other as much. I said, no, I'm still his sister. Of course we will, but this has really upset me and left me feeling like you and my sister-in-law don't value our relationship. This went on for a while and I said, I'm not trying to ruin his wedding. I'm not going no contact. I'm just going to be a sister from now on and stop trying to do what I think mom and dad would have done if they had the chance. We got into it about the pressure and obligations I felt since they passed. All very promising. I think I'm going to talk to a counselor about all of this. Lots of it is unprocessed grief and unreasonable thought in my mind is that if my brother doesn't want for anything, then he won't be sad and won't feel the absence of our parents as much. We both agree this is the best for us both. So was I I the jerk for paying for my brother's entire wedding and expecting to have been involved in it. The money is complicating this whole situation. As the OP said in the post, he's already making a decent wage, enough to live on, and perpetually assisting him financially seems to create all of these unnecessary complications, not only in their relationship between the OP and her brother, but also between the sister-in-law's family, the sister-in-law herself and the OP. You can already tell it's planting seeds of resentment. Just the single fact that the family of the sister-in-law didn't know that the OP the sister was paying for the entire wedding and then was expecting her to pay more for their honeymoon and wanted to split the cost. The OP was seething and this is only a retelling of it. So you can only imagine how angry she actually was in that situation for feeling totally taken for granted. The most simple, straightforward solution here is let the brother be an independent adult, whether it's right now for this wedding or it's immediately afterwards. From the sounds of it, anything is better than the OP having to see herself as the ATM, as she says. So if this was you and your brother and you were helping him all these years and this happened, how would you handle it? Jerk or not a jerk? Let me know down below. Am I the jerk for banning my mother-in-law from the house after I discovered that she installed a camera in the bedroom? My husband is 33 years old. He got into a car accident almost a month ago. He's been bedridden due to a back injury and I've been his primary caregiver. The pressure for my mother-in-law has been too much. She keeps telling me to take care of him and be there for him constantly. She begged me to take time off of work and I did. She asked me to send her hourly updates about his condition for the first two weeks, but then when I don't, she'd get mad and it would cause an issue. She visits every day but doesn't do anything to help. Alternatively, she'd list all the things I should or shouldn't do. The family keeps telling me she's just worried sick for her son, so I try to stay calm. Days ago, she called to berate me about not replacing the sheets quickly. I had no idea how she found out since my husband didn't call her. My sister-in-law called me to tell me that her mom installed a camera in the bedroom to see if I was taking proper care of her son. I was stunned. After searching the room, I actually found the camera. I called my mother-in-law and had a huge fight with her. She admitted it and said she was just feeling concerned and wanted to make sure her son was being cared for despite him calling her every day. I yelled at her, telling her that she is no longer welcome into my house after this. She lost it and went on a rant about how I'm stopping her from seeing her son and that not seeing him will literally make her sick 
herself. The family called me later to get me to back out of this decision, but I told them she breached my privacy and took advantage of the situation. They said I'm taking it too personally and that I can't blame a concerned mother for wanting to make sure her son's fine, especially since she listed things that she thought that I was doing wrong. I ended the conversation, but my husband is upset telling me I'm being vindictive and that if his mom can't come, then he'll move there with her. We argued, then I went outside and he's been silent ever since. So, am I the jerk for banning my mother-in-law from the house once I discovered she installed cameras in my bedroom? That is such an extreme invasion of privacy that I cannot believe the husband is fine with it. Or even if he's not fine with it, but he just doesn't agree with the decision to ban the mother from the house, the OP didn't explain that he expressed that he's not okay with it because what is the mom doing? Just watching what they're doing all day long instead of actually coming there and helping and contributing? This mother-in-law must be at least somewhat tech savvy to be able to get the camera in there, set it up, and be able to monitor it all on her own, unless the sister-in-law that told the OP was the one that helped her set it up and then she had a change of heart. But either way, it doesn't matter. All that matters is the mom set up a camera in the OP's bedroom. I think that's enough to make anyone freak out and want to sever ties like this, but do you think it was too far? Let me know what you would do if somebody did this to you, your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, either way, jerk or not a jerk, and why. Am I the jerk for how I responded to my brother-in-law's comment about my leg hair? I'm a 19 year old female, my sister is 28, and my brother-in-law came over with the kids for dinner at my parents' house. I was watching my nieces while dinner was getting ready. We sat down and I happened to sit next to my brother-in-law. I was wearing a skirt and it accidentally lifted above my knee. My brother-in-law looked up and down my leg and made a face and then loudly said, oh shoo, this is gross. You should have shaved. That hair isn't supposed to be there. Everyone's still And I told him, if it's not supposed to be there, then why does it grow there? Can you explain? He was like, well, it's not supposed to be there. I pointed at his mustache and said, well, I guess the same thing can be said about your little mustache then, huh? He looks at me with eyes wide open and an awkward silence takes over, though some laughed. My sister told me to knock it off as my brother-in-law got up from his chair and went inside the bathroom. My sister followed and I could hear him having a breakdown, asking her if there was something wrong with his mustache. My brother and I kept giggling, but dinner got cut short because my brother-in-law wanted to leave. I later got scolded by my sister saying that I stepped over the line and I disrespected someone who's older than me and demanded that I apologize to him for insulting him and for ruining dinner. My sister said the reason my brother-in-law got so offended was because he considers his mustache a symbol of his manhood. So I insulted his manhood, not just made a backhanded comment. She said I psychologically harmed him and I should apologize for it, but I'm not sure if that fixes anything except how he feels about his mustache. So am I the jerk? This is one of those situations where it's confusing why the brother-in-law even cares. Who cares if she has hair or not? Why does it matter to him? Maybe he thought he was telling a joke but then forgot to tell the joke and he thought it was funny but nobody else really thought it was funny and then he wasn't expecting her to clap back at him that hard about his unmanly mustache. It seems like a guy who doesn't have much going on so he's focusing on caring about things that the average person probably wouldn't care about. What people think about his mustache and whether or not other people have hair on their legs. But how do you interpret this? Let me know down below in jerk or not a jerk and why. Am I the jerk for telling my dad who left that I don't remember him. I'm a 15 year old female. My father is 46 years old. My dad left the family when I was seven years old without any explanation. He just vanished one day and I've never seen him since. He left because of relationship issues with my mom. She was heartbroken and waited five years for him to return, but in the end, filed for divorce. Thankfully, she's over him now. To be honest, eight years after he left, I barely have any memory of him at all. Only some resentment for the years of suffering he put my mom and sister through. My sister's 19. They tried and tried to contact him, but he never responded. I can't remember his voice, his personality, or even his face much. Last week, he texted my mother and said that he wanted to meet. After eight years of disappearance, my mom agreed. We arranged a meetup at a nearby restaurant. My sister was so nervous slash excited, but I realized I felt nearly nothing. He arrived and my mom and sister started crying. He cried too at the sight of his quote, beloved daughters. And he said that I looked quite emotionless and said, don't you miss your dad? I replied honestly that I didn't remember him. He left so long ago. It's like I barely knew him. He was so shocked and hurt. Eventually he cut off our meetup early claiming he had to work. My mom and sister were so mad and they blamed it on me. 
My mom said that my sister's been waiting to see her dad for so long, but I had to make a stupid remark and make him leave a second time, asking how I could behave like this towards my dad, telling me that I am a selfish bee and a jerk. I'm sorry that he cut the meetup short because I knew my sister missed him so much, but to be honest, I don't feel bad for saying the truth. Am I the jerk? If you have to have the exact right emotional state for him not to run off again, like he did before when he was in the wrong according to this, then you don't need him in your life. It's easier said than done, but this is just very telling that you either give him the exact emotions that he expects or he's gone. And then you're going to have your sister and your mother turn on you and blame you again for his disappearance, even though that logically holds no weight whatsoever. If anything, she should have gone hard on him, not even just neutral, but actually start blaming him and telling him what was up, the reality of the situation for him abandoning them and then wanting to reap the rewards of having his beloved daughters when he just crawls back into their lives. I have zero sympathy for this dad whatsoever. What probably happened is he had a good thing going and that thing fell apart, so he went back to plan B, his own family, his daughters and the mom. Maybe not, but in a lot of these situations, that seems to be what tends to happen. So if you were in a situation where your father was gone for so long, you didn't even remember him and then he stormed out because you didn't have the right emotion expressed to him, how would you handle the situation and do you think the OP is a jerk or not? If you want to see the next story, go to the YouTube description, click on the playlist and you can let the whole thing play in the background while you chill, play games, trade stock, commute to school or work. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel by hitting that subscribe button and then hitting the bell to turn on notifications. But either way, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys next time.